Hello ladies and gentlemen, Sigvald the Grim here and welcome to my first top 10 video. In the past I have done top 5 videos but for today I think the character pool that we are going to talk about, uh, the tank characters, is large enough to do a top 10 video. Uh, a similar video was done by uh, Jigsaw Art and Gaming and I will link that video in the description if you need uh, a different opinion but that, that video is outdated in my opinion since, uh, since he made it there were 3 more overpowered tanks introduced and also I'm going to have a different criteria, like I'm not going to introduce uh, tanky supports into this list. In order for a character to be considered a tank by me, it needs uh, for his abilities to recommend him to be built as a tank. I will not count characters that just make your team overall tanky. And for that reason alone, you will not find on this list uh, characters uh, like... Uh, uh, Atrocitus uh, or a Horrific Scarecrow because as they can be built as a tanks and they are built as a tanks their main role is the support and they have nothing that strictly recommends them to be built as a tank. So if you are not subscribed you should check out my other top 5 videos. Uh, I have one about the best combo builders and one about the best silver characters and uh, you need to keep in mind that this build is uh, based on my personal opinion and if you have a different opinion you should definitely let me know down in the comments and uh, we can uh, debate about it as, a re as I do read all comments. And without further ado, let's get into it. Coming in at number 10 we have uh, Cyborg, the silver variant. Uh, this guy is not the best tank in the game and not the best silver tank even and the only thing that recommends him as a tank really is his passive that is regeneration and this offers a health boost for the team and at the same time uh, allows him to recover by a certain amount uh, while he's tagged out. Uh, this is a good passive, uh, but uh, I will get into why I don't like it later. His abilities, uh, he's got uh, some Power Drain on special one, this is decent, Power Drain is good, but again does not recommend him as a tank. His special 2 is just bland and his special 3 is at the same time just bland without any additional effects. And going back, but the passive why I don't like it uh, is because of the following. With this passive, he can uh, in some certain situation tank more overall damage than any character on this list. But at the same time why I do not like this passive is that in order for this passive to be applied, in order for this to work properly, you need to have him tagged out and his condition to stay out of the fight in order to regenerate HP. And when I'm talking about tanks, I'm talking about somebody that I can count at any single moment to tank for me and that I can tag in at every single moment, not a character that needs to sit back and recover health. And on the other hand, he doesn't uh, really have a shield, not all characters on this list have a shield ability, but that's also a thing to keep in mind. Unfortunately, the best I could do for uh, my boy Cyborg is number 10 as I consider all the characters on this list superior to him. At uh, number 9 we have uh, Armored Superman and keep in mind that from this point on I do like all the tanks and all the tanks from this point on are very good in my opinion and are very viable to use and the only reason that Superman is just so low on this list is that uh, the other tanks on this list are just uh, as much better. So he's got first of all his passive that is Kryptonian armor and uh, first thing is that he ignores uh, the first special casted by the enemy. In my opinion this is not such a big deal, it's an annoyance when you play against him but when you play as him uh, it's not such a big deal because you could just uh, block it with uh, his shield which is super block but that we are going to talk about later. And the second part of this passive is that he gives 20% uh, defense to the team. I, I, I'm sure I'm pretty sure this also applies to himself so that's a pretty good defense buff uh, and because of that you can uh, use your uh, bonus slots in order to uh, put uh, more HP instead of that defense that he's got already and that's a very good thing. His uh, abilities are not that interesting he's got a dot on his special one that doesn't do that much damage especially if you build him as a tank. 
His special tree just does some damage with no added effect and nothing special and he's got a super block which uh, reflects incoming damage uh, and blocks incoming damage. Uh, with blocking uh, it means reducing the incoming damage by a certain amount. This is a very good thing to have as a tank, uh, a great shield and he's a great tank overall and the big bonus to him is that you will get him more or less for free from the achievements where you get shards for him. So overall this is a good character, a solid tank, a good character for beginners and uh, will perform uh, pretty good for you in the arena and champions arena and again the reason why he didn't make it on his list because is because he's pretty basic and the only thing that helps him to stand out from other tanks that also have a super block and didn't make it on this list is the fact that you get him from achievement and his Kryptonian armor. Coming in on number 8 we have Hellboy. And the only thing that recommends this guy as a tank is his passive. First let's get through his other abilities just to get them out of the way. His uh, special 1 nothing special about it, his special 2 just bland damage and his special 3 has armor pierce. So, so far we got uh, an, a bit a bit above average uh, damage in terms of abilities but what makes him a great tank is the fact that uh, he heals uh, by the dot damage. So every dot damage that is directed at him, not only that is ignored totally, but instead it heals him. And this makes him a great tank from two points of view. First of all, he's a great tank for uh, raids in phase 3, where you can just push uh, Brainiac all the way to the right wall and keep him there and uh, stand in the dot damage while healing your Hellboy. And because of that you don't even need to have him perfectly build as a tank because he will constantly heal and on the other hand he's a good tank for arena and champions arena because at high levels uh, the most threatening thing is uh, dot damage and yes I'm talking about you armor supergirl and the other thing is that he gets additional damage and defense against arcane opponents that's not very important so just because of that dot damage 100% ignore and at the same time fully heal by he gets all the way to number 8 slot and also it's worth mentioning that since you don't need to put resistances on him when you put him as a tank you've got uh, even more room for other tank stats. Coming in at number 7 we have Arkham Knight Batman and I know I said I will not include on this list characters that have generic passive that apply to their whole team but uh, Arkham Knight Batman's passive uh, that make him tanky only apply to a select few characters that is tech and agility and he is one of them. And they are just too good in terms of tankiness uh, in order not to include on this list. And just because of the fact that uh, he is more of a support oriented character he didn't score higher on this list because I will keep that in mind. And let's get into why he's so good. And uh, there are three things that make him incredible. First of all, it's a Wayne tech. Uh, this thing, uh, other than the 100% dot damage increase, because that doesn't matter in terms of him being a tank, he provides 60% defense for tech and ally teammates, and that also applies to himself, and a whopping 100% uh, 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 100 25 uh, health increase for tech and agility teammates and that also applies from, for himself. And uh, keeping that in mind uh, along with uh, the gear based defense, this guy right off the bat has maximum defense and a huge amount of health. So you can just go ahead and put this guy into arena and champions arena without doing anything to build him towards anything and he will be a great tank. And if you are going to build him as a tank, all you need to do is to get his resistances to max and then add a lot of HP. And that way this guy will be a monster and will be extremely hard to kill. On the other hand, he has another thing that recommends him as a tank, which is the multi fear takedown. This also applies to him as to his teammates and this provides 25% uh, 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 of his health regenerated on takedowns. So it's very important for tanks to also have a heal and a very good bonus added. And the third thing is uh, the free flow counter. Uh, in this is more of a situational thing, but uh, three times per battle he counters uh, the special attacks of meta human opponents, and this uh, can come in handy in arena and champions arena battles. 
And because all of this, uh, this guy makes it all the way up to 7 spot, he didn't make it higher because his abilities are generic and can be applied to other teammates. So he is not necessarily the tank, but he is a great tank and can make other characters great tanks. Coming in at number 6 on this list we have Greed. And why is Greed a great tank? First of all let's get out of the way his uh, special attacks. Uh, his special one uh, doesn't do anything special except for increased damage against tech opponents. Uh, the special 2 again uh, nothing great about it except that increased damage. And special 3 uh, at the same time uh, but uh, you get a very situational heal uh, if you knock out a cyborg opponent. And that is not going to be uh, often enough used for me to take into account. But what makes him a great tank is a part of his circuit breaker. Except all the counters to tech opponents and cyborg, we are going to focus on the bottom part of it. Which is that if he loses 15% uh, uh, of the health or in less than one second, uh, then uh, he will get a huge amount of health shield. This ability is comparable to the Cosmic Staff passive and also comparable to Dark Side's passive. And this is a very great ability because uh, it prevents one shots. And at the same time, while your shield is active, uh, you will not get staggered and your opponents will act as they are blinded while they hit you. So you can break their combo while the shield, the shield is activated and just go on the offensive. And for this reason alone and for this great passive, uh, this guy is uh, all the way to number 6 on this list. He didn't make it higher on the list because the characters that uh, are coming up after this are just so much better. But uh, I wanted to mention that he's in a very tight competition with the number 5, which I'll mention after him. And if you think that he should have been number 5 and the number 5 should have been number 6, then you might be totally right because they are very close to each other and this only comes to personal opinion. Coming in at number 5, in a very tight competition with the number 6 as I said, we have uh, Nightmare Batman. And uh, his abilities are bare bones, there's nothing around here that recommends him as a tank, but what we are going to take a look at is his passive, Nightmare Ambush. Uh, what does this do? First of all, the 3 second advantage means that he will stun for 3 seconds uh, the first opponent at the beginning of uh, each battle. And that's a pretty good thing to have, especially in defensive teams for Champions Arena. But the second part is what interests us the most. And this is the 75% uh, chance to reflect 100% of uh, the incoming basic and uh, tagging attacks. And what does this mean? It means that your opponents are simply going to come and uh, kill themselves by hitting you. And in order to take advantage, uh, full advantage of this passive, you need to build him very tanky. As your opponents will reflect back the damage they would take uh, based on their defenses. So at the same time you can have, uh, for example, a cyborg hitting you for uh, 1k a hit and he will take back around 10k a hit. So that's a good possibility. This guy is a very great tank for Arena and Champions Arena, as I said, and he is a very great counter to... Uh, Justice League teams and to League of Anarchy teams. And for those reasons he made it to number 5. He didn't make it higher on this list because uh, after him we got the very overpowered characters uh, on this list and at the same time this passive is the only thing that recommends him to be built as a tank. Coming in at number 4 we have our big boy Batman Gorilla Grodd. And let's take a look at his abilities. His first ability, nothing very special about it except bonus damage against blinded opponents. We will not take that into account since we don't care about damage on this list. The second one is a very good shield that reflects a huge amount of the incoming damage and blocks almost all of it. So already this recommends him as a great tank. And uh, his last ability, Mind Force. Uh, it's got some uh, tankiness uh, to it because it increases your healing and healing means you are going to survive for much longer. Now let's get into the bread and butter of this character which is his passive. The crippling blow will not take into account because it's an offensive ability but it's something to keep in mind because it's a very good uh, passive that can also make him a combo builder at the same time as a tank. 
Uh, his second passive, Dramatic Rehearsal, is a very good passive uh, because when he uh, decreases below 30% health, he will gain a lethal chance and he will heal on basic and tagging attacks. And this thing uh, makes it uh, be like a fail safe in case you fail something while uh, doing battles in the arena or champions arena. This will trigger and you can heal back to full HP with no problems. And uh, his third passive master plan uh, makes him gain uh, barriers of powers while hitting the opponent. Uh, he's an overall great character, a very great support for the Batman Ninja team and a very great tank because of the fact that he has a very good shield and he can heal himself back to full once he has been damaged below a certain percentage. He didn't make it higher on this list because uh, the next characters uh, are extremely tanky and uh, serve mainly the role of being tanks. Coming in at number 3 we have Darkseid and this guy is amazing because of the fact that he's good at everything. First of all his abilities, his special one got warm armor pierce and his special 2 got power drain. Of course we will not really take this into account for this list because this is oriented towards damage dealing and we are only caring about tankiness. But if you want tankiness Darkseid will provide. We, he's got his special tree which is Parademons and uh, he summons a Parademon. This is tied to his passive that is called Parademons uh, and uh, every time he summons uh, a Parademon which is his special tree, the Parademon gets a percentage of his defense and of his health. And what does this mean? This means that in a battle you if you build a huge dark side with huge defense and huge health, you can basically multiply it three times, almost to the full potential. So you can basically have uh, almost the full stats of dark side four times per every single battle. And on top of that, uh, every time a parademon dies, or an enemy, or a teammate, you get a damage boost and also you get your health regenerated. And on top of that, uh, every time you take damage higher, higher than a percentage of your max health, you get a, a huge shield based on your current health. So if you are about to get bursted, you also gain a shield that will prevent that. Uh, this is uh, very similar to the Grid shield, but it's much better and along with his kit. And the Apocalypse Bombardment, it's uh, again a more damage oriented ability, but it's worth keeping in mind. So for, for those reasons, he is an amazing tank and he can use his stats like 3 times over in the battle and he can indefinitely heal. And for those reasons, he got up to number 3. Well, he will not get higher on this list because the number 1 is just the best tank and there's no competing with it. And the number 2 character... Uh, it's more of a personal opinion about number 2 character but I think it's going to be a very underrated pick that none of you expected and he's a great tank. Coming in on number 2 we have Superman and uh, hold on guys I know what you're thinking. What's wrong with this guy? He put a silver character above uh, a lot of gold characters and two legendary characters but please hear me out about why this character is great. First of all let's get over what is not great about this character which are his special 1 which is bland damage and special 3 which is also bland damage. But his special 2 super block uh, blocks a huge amount of the incoming damage and reflects more than half of it back. So this is a great fit for a tank but there were other characters on this list that also had it. So it's great but not a huge deal counting towards the ranking. What really counts towards the ranking is his passive. His passive is called invulnerable. And this gives him plus 10% defense and also to his team. And uh, the important part is that he has a 50% chance uh, to ignore damage from basic attacks. What happens when you ignore damage? Uh, it uh, acts like your enemy being uh, blind and uh, trying to hit you and he is going to miss all the hits. And why is this important? Because this is how it works. You are going to fight in uh, the arena, let's say, or champion's arena. And the enemy is going to try to start a combo on you. Maybe he will hit the first basic and then he will miss the next. And what happens? This passive is not going to block half of his full combo. Because when he misses the first attack of his combo, you can just strike back and end his combo midway. So this in theory makes him almost immune to basic attacks. 
and coupled with this uh, which is the super block that makes him immune to abilities if you cast it right there's absolutely nothing that can put a dent in your silver superman and for those reasons alone uh, i think you could only damage him with super moves of course if you play it right uh, and for those reasons, uh, he is number two on this list. He didn't score higher on this list because the number one character uh, as a tank that I think most people expect is just too broken, in my opinion, to have any competition. Coming in at number one, without being a surprise to anyone, I think, uh, is uh, Justice League Superman. And boy, where do I even start? Let's start with what doesn't really matter, which is his first one, is Charge Punch, just damage, nothing uh, towards tankiness to count about. And his third ability, Justice, uh, only damage and of course burning, but yet again, this doesn't count toward tankiness. Now, let's get into his passive. His first passive is uh, Batman vs Superman and this uh, increases uh, your attack by 180% for every uh, Batman teammate or opponent and increases your health by 180% for every Wonder Woman teammate. So in theory if you wanted to go full tank you could put two Wonder Woman teammates on your team and there's nothing, absolutely nothing anybody will be able to do in the time limit that the match has even if this guy is in the defensive to go through that much HP. Moving to his nest ability, do you bleed? Uh, it's a uh, 48% for Justice League and legendary teammates and I think this uh, most likely applies to himself too. I might be wrong here so I'm not going to include this but this is to keep in mind and uh, yet again his special tree. So what's the purpose of a tank in a match? The purpose of a tank in a match is to soak up the damage and protect your damage dealers. And what does this do? This does exactly that thing. So in case you ever screw up and your damage dealer is about to get uh, a special used on him, uh, this guy even interrupts that for you. This guy is going to fix your mistakes and this guy is going to jump in, save your damage dealer and deal some damage. And this is amazing. And we didn't even get into the best part of this character. The best part of this character is the super block that he has. Uh, like other characters, it uh, decreases uh, almost all the incoming damage, reflects more than a half back. And the most important thing is that it restores health for every special that you block. And this is huge. So basically, considering this shield, you are better off not attacking him, you are better off quitting the game than fighting this guy. And this character is the most painful to fight in the arena and champions arena, and in some situations there's still not a team in the game that can do something about him. And for all those reasons, and because he's a very overpowered tank, he will make number one on my top 10 tanks list. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this was all for today's video. I want to thank you all very much for watching. If you do not agree with my list, uh, please comment down below with your own opinion on a top uh, 10 uh, tank list. If you're new to the channel, I would advise you to also check out my other top 5 uh, uh, lists on this channel. And this was all for this one. I'll see you in the next one.